All right, so Nick and I are going back into where we saw all those bucks last night. We're gonna kind of go into the back side of it. We caught a short glimpse of a buck coming up off this ridge and the direction he's coming from is an area that we've hunted a bunch and it would make sense to me for a big one to be bedded deeper back in by where he was at. So we're hoping either him or a different one is gonna be back in that direction this morning. This bedding area is to the south of that big section of natural browse stuff that they're going to. And we'd ha we've had predominant north winds here for three, four days. So I guess it just makes sense in my mind for a buck to be bedding on the south side of that and then just walking into the wind throughout the evening and uh, making it out to that natural browse food plot, I guess we'll call it. Maybe we can catch some sort of shift or catch something up on their feet a little bit later than what they have been. Or at least maybe learn something for tonight. We'll probably be hunting this area, hopefully until we either shoot something or feel like we've blown the whole thing out. But what we're doing this morning is not very aggressive. We're Honestly, we're going to be doing more observing, at least right off the bat. And then Ted and Cole are going back in to where they had that really scary mountain lion encounter yesterday. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. Wish them luck. Hope they're safe. <laughs> Holy Toledo's, here they come. Oh, run, run, run. They're still moving. Still moving real good. It's probably getting towards nine o'clock. You've seen probably 10 deer. One nice eight point. We were hoping he'd stir a bigger one up. There's still a bunch of blue jays going up on that hillside. They have been all morning, right where those does popped out, but there's Probably a bunch more deer up there. Nick and I cruised past the private land field that's on the top side of this the other day, and there's just a ton of deer out on it. So we're thinking if a buck doesn't pop out, we're just going to push deeper. See just down the way from us, but man's got some bite to it. Yeah. Ooh, big buck! Big buck! Big buck! Big 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 big. Okay. He's going the other way. He's from trotting across that bottom. To the, to the right of the willows. He's going to be up on the ridge there right where them does went up. There he is. something but I that was pretty far I want to be pretty solid if I'm shooting on that far <laughs> I, was, I was so rattled I'm just like you shouldn't shoot at this <laughs> just a huge frame bait point <laughs> it looked like he's a cow that's that bedding area we were talking about I was shaking a little bit Maybe he'll get on them nose trail and come back down here. <laughs> a little shaken up. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have to glass him or anything, and I was just like, big buck. <laughs> well, word on the street is Cole Booth's making some breakfast, so we're gonna slide in right about the time it's done, so. I'm gonna head out of here, but I think we'll either be right back in this spot tonight or we might move down a little bit we're not sure yet the thing i like about this is as long as something stops long enough we can shoot this whole area that we can see so and our hope is that he's going to just pop back out along this edge tonight and if he does that and feeds down that edge real slow that'll give us a pretty good opportunity and there's also potential that there's a different buck back in there too so go check in with the 
bead team and see what they run into. See if they saw any mountain cougars this morning. <laughs> Got a new goodie package at the house too with all the new stuff. Look good, play good. And rule number one is always look cool. Rule number two is to keep Rachel fed. That's what my girlfriend says. Those are the rules I play by. All right, so we're back in the location where we saw that big eight pointer this morning. We got Greg with his long lens with us, so <laughs> so we probably won't see it. <laughs> no, we got this is what we got going in our favor. Greg came in and Warb left. Yeah. So since Warb left. Every time we somebody should. leaves, it seems like something happens. So. Shakes things up a little yeah. bit. Something's like going to change. We're going to be in two pretty good spots tonight, and we'll be able to hear each other shoot. It could be pretty fun. We're slowly narrowing it down, so it's warming up a little bit. we still got a nice breeze, and it's only in the mid-60s, so we just need either that buck to pop back out on that edge that we saw him on or a different one to pop out from somewhere. There was a lot of deer moving through there this morning so who knows what's what might be deeper back in that mm -hmm. bedding area where he popped out of we're gonna get in there though and start watching thought about going back to that point but it's all just so much taller than right here i think i might do that in the next couple of days if we don't end up shooting anything just because i don't think anybody's been in here get up in a saddle on that point there maybe even tomorrow morning but he was you know he kind of worked that way a little bit this morning so I've, I wouldn't be surprised if he pops out, you know, down there, kind of where Ted and his dad shot that one, or just popped down on that edge and walked it into the wind. There's a lot of deer that fed on that edge under those pin oaks, though, and that buck worked to scrape up there and stuff. I'm good. Yeah, I'm on him.
more broadside. Left, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything when he turns up. Hit him hard. He reared back he up. Reared up. <sighs> I'm pretty sure he felt. I lost track of him. Right there. Sure. Just gotta keep watching. Yeah. Pretty sure he felt that. I'm glad he stayed there as long as he did because that gave me a lot of time. <laughs> he was digging really hard. Got, I got. I'm pretty worked up there for a little bit. So glad that he stood there as long as he did, because if he had started walking out and been flustered, just kind of like I was this morning, he stood in that same spot for a while, and I was just like, calm down, calm down. I got to range it like three times. Did you see him rear up? No, I mean, it knocked when you shot, it like, <laughs> when you shot, it hit him. Then like dropped him down a little bit, and then he reared up, and then took off. He reared up and very spun. slightly quartered too, so I had it on. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it looked like the impact dropped him down a little bit. So maybe hit one shoulder and that's why Yeah, it dropped him down and he reared up. I'm pretty sure he's dead just to the left of that big bunch of wood. Yeah, I there. followed him and then just lost sight of him. Yeah, yeah and straight him. away, because I, I could... I there's got, there's a, a roll right yeah. there. I'm guessing he's right down I got in that. Yeah, he just I banged his down in there. Digging like yeah. that. He was in that same he spot. Five time. yards. That's kind of what I was hoping he'd do, especially on a calm night. I think we even just said something about it. It'd be nice if he just got out on that edge and fed.
basically till they got up in the timber and it's pretty dark in that timber. I don't think we're going to be able to sneak up on him and get a shot at him if he were to still be alive. We got really good blood though. I just want to go back to the cabin and watch it on the computer. I think we'll be able to tell exactly where he's hit when we do that. Everybody's initial reaction to the way he took off and reacted was good. So, But we might as well run back to the house since we got footage of it. Then we can know what the best decision is from here. So we tracked him like 80 yards. And he got up into that timber and I don't really want to. It was dark in there. A lot of blood. Bright blood. Like, I want to watch it on the laptop, I think. I think we'll know right where it is. I just want to make sure it's not too low. Not that we can do anything about it anyway at this point, but I, I just I don't think we're going to be able to sneak up on him in that dark timber. If anything, I have a feeling it's low just because of all the blood and then, I don't know, just the reaction to the shot, I guess, but he was bedded right there, Greg. There's a bunch he of beds. stood up right there. Yeah, I think so. There's a bunch of fresh beds that are big, and he was just eating on locust pots there. He just stood up and yeah. saw him. That makes sense with what he yeah. the same deer the way he went in this morning. Yeah. I figured I'd just get a jump start. Pretty good, it looks like. Yeah. You can see where it goes through the grass, and it. You gotta watch it a couple more times to know yeah. more about where it hits him. But I would think if it was low in his leg, you'd really be able to see it. I almost wonder if that's it there, which would be right in front of his heart. Or, you know, you get some of those arteries that mm -hmm. go out the front, just like that one crystal just shot with the bow. And then with that bullet expanding, you'd get more than that, I would think. I mean, I don't see it anywhere down real low on his leg, and I think he would. It might not be as low as what I thought. I almost feel like that's it right there. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you can see some movement going on there. I feel like that's it right there. Yeah, it seems like it. Which should kill him, I would think. Yeah, got a big old forehead on him. Yeah, that's Man, what's making me that. think he ran <laughs> the way, as far as he did. If he can take it. There's just a couple frames, I guess, where I think it's Is gone. that the actual bullet? Yeah, you can Holy see it cow, clear day. Wild. <laughs> I mean, you can see the, that the, is the vapor wild. trail around and everything. And then when he rears up, you realize his body goes lower than what it seems uh -huh. like, I guess, from his back on, too. I think it's right there. Nick. Yeah. Good deal. Oh, I think you got him. I hope. I think you got him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Looks good Looks like it. Is that the same one from this morning? Yeah. Oh, oh! That's wild. Maybe I've never seen one go up like that. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, you, you can, can see, see it go like that. Yeah, you see the bullet. This is great yeah. footage. Yeah. Oh, 4K God, 120. Way slow. <laughs> Everything looks good to this point, so we got to just find him cool. Looks pretty good from what we can tell from the footage. You can't tell anything for certain, but it looks like it enters right in front of his front leg there. We just wanted to come back here and see what we could learn from that because I guess we have the luxury of Greg's 4K 120 frame footage, so <laughs> you could really see that bullet going through there. So we're gonna you go back. Literally see the bullet going. <laughs> yeah. And everything looks good as far as like his reaction to the shot, the sound of it, blood looked really good. So we'll go see. Hopefully he's at the end of the trail here. Might just still do like two people on the track. I think. Yeah. Just because I mean, might as well be careful. I don't exactly where it is or anything like that. I think we got a good idea, but also I have a tough experience with that hit, so in case he were to still be alive, I'd be able to see him up in front of us. Okay. Frothy and bubbly, it sounds like. Yeah. He opens up more as time goes on, it seems like.
good blood that eventually led to a bed. And the bed seemed like the blood was drying and like we maybe got him up while we did our initial track. But then it stayed open real good. I think it's just low. If I hit anything on his heart, he should have been dead in that first bed. So I guess we won't know until we get up to him exactly where he's hit. But we just eased up the blood trail and eventually I stood up on a log and I could see him bedded up there. So we're just going to come back in a couple hours, I guess, probably, and give him a little more time and hopefully he's dead in that next bed, I guess. Single long, low long, probably is what it is. Yeah, there's obviously coyotes around, so that's a concern, but we're just going to come back in here in a couple hours and hopefully he'll be dead. I would have hated to jump him up and yeah. who knows what can happen. So yeah, played it right. We played that right. Just didn't play the shot right. Gave this thing how many more hours has it been since we how many hours has it been since it shot? Shot him at eleven. So we're hoping he'll be laying dead. And if he's not, we'll just, uh, we'll just come back and get the gun and shoot him at first light, I guess, if he's still alive. But I'm guessing he's still gonna be in the same spot, so we're just gonna go check on him, see if we can see his eyes up there or not, or see his head up and hopefully it's laying flat on the ground. I guess more fresh, freshly hit. 
when he still had a bunch of adrenaline and probably a lot more energy. Just, I thought I just went up there by myself all gung-ho and got him up on his feet. Who knows how far it would have went. And then blood was also really dwindling down after those first couple beds. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, at the end there, all we were doing was finding blood in the next bed, basically. And luckily, that was only 20, 30 yards, and he was following yeah. trails and stuff. But it's probably just going to be like a real jumbled mess on what all just happened in the last hour. But we, when we heard those coyotes, when we were coming down in here, I was just like trying to go as fast as I could because I figured there's three or four of them meeting on them. Yeah. I thought for sure we were going to be running them off of them. I mean, they are like, within 100 yards of them, it sounded like. Let's go look at it. <sighs> oh. oh, my cow, Jake. face too. Fat head. Well thank you guys. Oh yeah, that was that was an adventure for sure. Yeah. Now my word, look at the body on that thing yeah. too. It's just thick. Like, when we watched him walk across that field yesterday morning, he just I mean it looked like a horse really yeah. walking across there, just so big and long bodied. He cool. <laughs> yeah. Was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad we got him. Glad yeah. we got him before coyotes could get to him. That, yeah, that oh freaked me out. We just, wait, I don't think we said anything to each other. I just didn't no. walk. Oh, we all had the same thought. Yeah. Like, get down there, because it sounded like there was at least two or three of them right there, and they could, they could make pretty quick work out of them, I'd say. Yeah. We just uh, got him up here in the sun. I'm sure Greg's getting some sweet footage and pictures of them before we start cutting up on them, but figure we'd talk about what we learned. First of all, about the hunt itself, like kind of just finding a pretty big wad of deer that, that didn't seem to be getting a whole lot of pressure mm -hmm. directly down that bottom over there, which event eventually led us to come back in here. We saw a bunch of younger bucks kind of right close to the food source up there, and then just basically dove into the best bedding area that we know of that's downwind of that food source a little bit deeper than where all those bucks were. He didn't pop out till nine o'clock yesterday morning. So he got up and covered close to 400 yards between where we first saw him yesterday and then where we originally spot him yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I don't know at what time he ended up getting down there underneath those locust trees, but when we got up there and we started looking for blood, it looked like there was eight or so beds right underneath that locust tree and where he was just eating pods is what he was doing the whole time he was standing in that same spot yesterday. And being as calm as it was, like I don't know that he was gonna move more than 20 or 30 yards. By yeah. dark, he might have laid back down there again. It's interesting to see him in their bedding areas like that and how much they're at least getting up. They might not always be moving very yeah. far, but they're getting up pretty frequently. So. And he's got a bunch of deer insulating them, probably letting them know of any danger that would be coming from the top up here, anything like that. Insulating himself with, that's a nice, good term there. I like that. You know what they're doing. <laughs> As far as the shot goes, we haven't started cutting away at him yet to see exactly what I hit, and we might not be able to tell just because of my follow-up shot, but it was just too far forward. It was gonna kill him, but didn't kill him as fast as what we would like to. But I think following that up, we did everything in our power. I mean, we went up there before last light, and then it just got into where the timber was too dark. There was a lot of blood that we were following. I'm just super glad, I know I've said it, but, but I'm super glad that we came in here cautious. It's easy to go in there, especially when you got a bunch of buddies and be excited and making a bunch of noise, especially yep. after seeing all that blood. Just because there's a lot of good looking blood, I guess, doesn't mean... Doesn't mean that it's a great hit. Everything is so, so situational yep. when it comes to hits. It's like we're constantly learning. The main lesson from this one is just always be cautious. Like you said, if you don't actually see them go down, you can never be too careful, I guess. Yep. But we're going to get to cutting on them here, I think, and uh, get back to the house and probably start eating some portion of them. I don't know what yet. That'll be more up to you. But <laughs> We'll figure something out. I'll, I'll work up an idea while we're cutting on him. <laughs> Three, wow. smile, two, smile. one. Just gotta wait 15 minutes, see if it turned out.
Should we do a ride back for food in part? Oh, he'd love this. It's a good piece of meat right there. Mature buck backstrap. Gamey and tough, I'm sure. Oh, it's so gamey and so tough right now. Mm -mm -mm. That's great, man. Oh Thank you. Oh, my God, that's good. You want me to start here? Yeah. I thought you were going to be like a little up and you kind of pick up what everybody gets. I can do that. Mountain lion claws. Mountain lion claws on the back of Cole's I don't mind it's labeled Big Cat. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's all back. No, don't look. It's all back. It's all back. <laughs> Greg and Mindy. Oh, wow. I like that. Here's Jake's. Oh. We've got a nice orange hat. Hey, I'm going to pull my favorite one out first. Do a little bend to her. There it is, that's perfect for the duck hunting in the morning. Nice marsh camo for ground hunting. Or we can use the old school duck camo. That's my be what I would wear in the morning. Oh, that looks like you. You just wanted to be different, didn't you? Oh, he's different. I feel like I like it. I don't see it, but I feel like I like it. <laughs> the mirror right there. Yeah, cool. Well, that's, that's all that matters. Rule number, rule number one. Always look cool. Yeah, I like those two. I like the brown. That's hunting brown right there. I might have to bend the bill a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Hunting public topo sweatshirt right there. I like that. Yeah, I like a woman's version of that. Oh, yeah. That might be a woman's. <laughs> I, figure <laughs> I figured it was. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm wearing that tomorrow right there. Yeah, you get some all over that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just got all these new layers of clothing in. We got t-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of different hats, camo, rope hats, non-camo rope hats. A bunch of new designs on the website. We got the phone mounts for the car. We got the phone mounts for the bow. We got all kinds of new stuff on the website right now. Go check it out, huntpolk.com. We're just about to head to bed. Nick just made us a big dinner that I think put us all in a coma. What'd y'all do there? Oh, it was bacon, mushrooms, onions. Backstrap from the buck that we got this morning. And yeah. I haven't moved from this spot since I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. And we all ate a little too much of it, but good day. We appreciate you watching. Go check out all the new designs that they come out with. We'll see you guys on the next one.